Hey, what's going on guys and girls? 163 hard drive down here by the Rio Grande. <clears throat> oh, Kevin, this one's yours. First three letters are BLD. Yep, good things come to people that wait. By the way, I don't know what kind of grease that was or a combination. <laughs> Man, that shit was a mess. Oh, six transistors and a diode. Yeah, Q54, Q55, and all the MOSFETs. <clears throat> you know, she's looking good, man. She's all back together. All cleaned back up again. He didn't have all the parts, though, man. And again, in the future, never ship me a bag of parts. The, the radios, I mean, the way that we go through them, you know, is if they're foobard, then uh, those are last. That's all there is to it. Tuning is what we do. I think that's the most obvious you're going to see anywhere. And only when you can show it can you do it. And we're going to show you a little bit more. It seems to me that people haven't been paying attention. I heard a little, what is it? A little uh, munchkin with an accent. English accent. <laughs> Don't have a clue, it seems like. But he does this. Yeah, he does this. A lot of that. It's okay. So, 9.55, ready to rock and roll. And it's got my receive, it's got the AF. Yeah, it's going to hear good, talk good, the whole works. And last. Runs nice and cool. Now let's check it out. Nice, huh? Now let's take a look at the fundamental. Yeah, dead nuts on frequency. I don't see no noise. I don't see nothing in there. Looks good, doesn't it? Take a look at 30 kilohertz. Not bad. Yeah, real good. That's nice. It's real nice. 15 by 60, a true 4 to 1. No hocus pocus. You see everything that's going on. Notice how that nobody can ever show you. They claim that they might be an engineer, but where's their bench? You know, a real bench. Where is it? Show it. Don't be an idiot. Show it. Uh, yeah, that's that's badass. It's a really nice clean way. So let's see what we got here. Oh, 20. Cool. So you take peak, divide it by 2, or PEP for peak, divide that by 2 times 0.707, which is angular degrees or DC heating, the equivalent. You know, 20 watts, that's what this one does. Can it do a couple more? It will and just get hot. There's no need for that. Okay? This is how you sound. And the rest is your power. All right. It'll sit here and run like this. I don't recommend that you play music or nothing. You connect it to an amp. I don't recommend it. It's one of the older ones that has a decent input tune. No problem. Anyways, this thing will last you. This is one of the older ones. Like I said before, and there's a video. The next one down. Pay attention to it. Watch it. There's a lot of different radios just like this. So let's take a look at say 30 megahertz I don't really see nothing that's a 30 megahertz span by the way it's always the same thing okay there's no intermodulation distortion at all whatsoever especially towards the lower frequencies a lot of these created after they made the change from uh, the 13 and 10 the fr the irf 520s the last two nice beautiful way Oh, and by the way, some people say, oh, the scope. Well, get up the grade here, man. Get up the grade. Get away from that 20 megahertz scope you got and step it up. You know, you figure you need, you should go four times, you know, for the bandwidth of the scope, you should go like three or four times. I like four times. Sometimes I haven't been there before, but 100 megahertz minimum. The last Tektronix was doing a couple, like a, a percent or two at 100 megahertz. Naturally, I could test it. So this is a 400 megahertz with a fresh NIST traceable certification. Nice, ain't it? Hey, radio's still cruising. Dropping a couple watts, but nice. Nice and cool. All right, there we go. Beautiful way. So anyways, you can look at it the same way. But when you look at it like this, then you really can't see as much. I'll show you a little bit more here in a minute. 
see if you can double scale everything and you have the bandwidth and your, uh, your scope's got the bandwidth then go like this and not a still frame picture you know push your button still frame no it's all how you set your trigger all right so let's warm it up a little bit 25% modulation, 50% modulation, 75, almost 100. It'll reach 100 at certain peaks, the tones. All right, nice and clean, huh? Yeah, that's badass. Now, these measurements are done on 1K tone, by the way, all right? And actually, you actually need to know what the voltages are. Now, let's take a look at that, too on the input and what the frequency response is. Let's turn that on. See, there are adjustments and measurements you have to make understanding and knowing what the voltage is. And that's the voltage of my tone generator. Okay, it's an, audio, it's an audio tone generator, the real deal. So as you can see, all in plain sight. Cool shit, huh? Yeah. I dropped a few hertz for, it looks like. So anyways, there we go. This one's done. This one gets the lids and out the door. I'm gonna pop one straight out of the box. Okay, I've got another four of them to go yet. On these 955s. Okay. Let's see Some will get 93. That's which one this is. So I'm just gonna get it open. At least I don't expect this bread. Period. Alright. <clears throat> I got a number of videos on this. If you're not using a computer, I put a video up not long ago. I did screw up. I was using a program that I have installed on my phone that uh, I could look up any video within my YouTube channel. But you can't do it the same way. You just can't go to the little search window. But all you got to do is type in fine tune CB and type in your question and it'll pop up. Or just go below to where the uh, popular videos are. There's a lot of videos in there, educational videos. Okie dokie. You don't need that. See, not bad. It's also cold. It's not, you know, the operating temperature to be tuned at. So that's that's to be normal. Let's take a look at 30 kilohertz. Doesn't look bad. But what a nightmare! Oh, hold on. Oh, I didn't. I forgot my cameras down. Let's go back down to one kilohertz. You see it's our frequency. Yeah, the camera's on a little bit of angle. I gotta have some room to work here. Got brand new right out of the box. Okay. Just firing this baby up. Let's let it warm up a little bit too. I'm gonna warm up while we're doing this. What do we got? Nine minutes in. Well that's never mind that. Let's go look at 30 kilohertz. It's a pretty big spread, huh? Wide glide. Yep, wide glide. And what's causing that? Well, a number of things can be causing that. IMD 
can be measured in a couple of different ways and it, it depends on the circuit. We're not going to get into all the acronyms, etc. That's not what these videos are all about. It's teaching you guys what to look for if they can show you. And only if they can show you. If they can't show you everything in a nutshell, you got that Houdini shit going on. Okay, uh, let's take a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what's causing that? There. Get a closer look on that shit right there. I got an idea. I do so many of these radios. Uh, Okay, you see that. Now that we know what the percentage of modulation is, see like this? You can't see shit. You can, but... So let's get in here and take a look at it. 50% modulation. 75. Now, let's, let's get in here. Let me try this. No, no, you're right there. I was going to use the graticules, you know, the little, little bitty lines, there's five of them between the A-grads, that's a Tektronix type of thing, which works out great for math, for a 4 to 1 at 100%. Anyways, there is 25, 50, I don't know, that's about 60, no wait, 50, that's probably 60, 75, so let's say around 65, 65, 70. Watch the scope and the spectrum analyzer all at the same time. Watch closely. I'm on my tone generator. See, this is one of the most unique things you're going to find. That's why nobody can show you this shit. You know, if you start injecting some tone or some kind of shit, notice how everything's in front of you? Yeah. Let's back out a second. See that? Watch that. Hey, it's gone. That's what we are injecting. Exactly what you're supposed to be injecting. Now, there are other adjustments, but we're not going to get into that now. So, watch this close again. Real close. There's your carrier. Not a bad carrier. Now, the radio's out of the box, mind you. Straight out of the box which the majority of these radios out of the box are really decent when you take all the the different modes bands you know they're not bad but it does take attack to get in there and tune these radios I don't care what they are it does these are still pretty decent I like the older ones better but we can still make the newer ones kick some ass all right so now I gotta look back at the camera Alright, so we're, we're all in there. And this is what I'm doing. Okay? So if you, ain't get, if you don't have that, or a way of doing it, you're FUBAR. You'll never be able to measure this. Period. Because you'll never see it. You go flying right past it, see a whole bunch of shit, <laughs> and never know what to look for especially in the tuning process. Again, if you don't know the input voltage. Anyways, let's go a little bit further. So right there about 65, is it? Right there, watch the scope and the spectrum. Let's call that 60, call that 65. Check out the wide glide. Yeah, get the picture, wide glide. Now let's zoom in to the scope. Remember what kind of scope that is. It's every radio man's dream, period. It's right there in front of you what it is. All right, now, remember what that happened when we hit 65% modulation? Give or take a little bit. That's 50, okay? Let's see how accurate that is. Yeah, pretty good, huh? All right, 25, 50. That would be like 75, but we can't get there because the type of intermodulation distortion we're looking at, that looks to me as if it's a, a linearity issue. It's non-linear causing this intermodulation distortion in the RF chain. 
it's plain and simple in plain sight. See that? Plus, it's overdriven. Okay, let's back out. Let's see what we got here. We still have forward modulation, but all that power, it isn't truly, it's at the fundamental of the spread not too wide due to the fact that the uh, RF chain, it's, it could be a little bit of phasing and voltage, but odds are, in the majority of them, it's, it's, no, it's not a linear signal, signal causing intermodulation distortion. Let's get you in there close. I've done a guy who knows how many videos on this same exact topic. So we don't care about the peaks right now. See it? Does that make sense yet? And that looks like linearity. Here, let's go a little closer. More focus. It's really nice to have a good scope. See all that shit? Okay, now remember when I hit this point? Starting to see that now? See all that shit right there? The non-linear signal? Phasing of it? Alright. That's thank you. I surely hope some of the, that was educational. Remember, if they're not showing you, there's a reason they're not showing you. It's because they're not doing it. Now let's hear from the chipmunk. Stay tuned in. You know who it is, and I'm out of here. Click, click.